is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logo that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with another video. We're going to talk about the Orlando Magic release and Isaiah Briscoe, a guy that I obviously said that I felt like he was going to struggle in the NBA because his lacking his his ability not to be able to make mid range or three point shots. Obviously, I still thought he was an NBA player. He will get to the NBA, and he ended up not getting. He was a top ten pick at um, going into college, and obviously he fell off in college, and he had to stay another year. And he ended up going undrafted, which is unfortunate because I thought that he would be a solid player. I thought his his abilities and his strongest skills didn't really translate to the NBA. But it is still good to see his NBA dream come true to go out there and make a roster after going undrafted. And then to fight and, and definitely get some playing time and show that you can actually compete at this level. Obviously, he never really got that many minutes. He never really got a lot of playing time, but he made a lot of progress from going undrafted. But they ended up replacing him with Michael Carter-Williams. Michael Carter-Williams is a guy that has bounced around the league. He's just trying to find a home. But it just looks like he's just going to be a journeyman because it's just so hard to commit to Michael Carter Williams long term when you know he he isn't really a a great player. It's like he does a lot of things like playing defense, he can rebound, he's a decent passer, and the fact that he can always um create something. He's not the greatest shooter as we all know, but his size and the mismatches that he caused has caused him in his age has caused him to stay in the NBA longer than a lot of people thought because he hasn't really stayed anywhere he's been bouncing around every single season he already went to multiple teams this year and to me it just shows you for him being rookie of the year that if you don't continue to work on your game you don't continue to improve your game the nba gonna pass you up obviously it's still a blessing to be able to play in the nba and it's still a blessing to have an opportunity to earn money from it because he is going to get paid because they signed to him for the rest of the season because they released Isaiah Briscoe. So he will make the rest of the roster. And if they do win these last couple games and they have a chance to make the playoffs, that will be, you know, a win for Michael Carter Williams. If he does play in the playoffs, you know, to go on and coming into the season, not to really be on a team, find a way to make a roster and then a team that you make it to, um, may even make it to the playoffs, which can help um, the way you play, can help you stay in the NBA just a little longer. Um, but eventually, Michael Carter-Williams and Isaiah Briscoe, they're going to have to transition into finding other ways to impact the game. Now, Isaiah Briscoe, he runs the offense a lot. He doesn't really, he's not as aggressive as he was in high school. He's more of a guy that's just going out there doing what the coach asks him to do. He hasn't really stood out. He hasn't really had any great breakout games. Um, and he has played better than what a lot of people expected, um, especially because he went undrafted. So a lot of people knew that he was one of the biggest players in high school but he fell off a lot in college. But he was able to give you 39% um, from the field, 32% from three. Um, the free throw percentage doesn't matter because he didn't even attempt one a game. He was able to give you two rebounds and two assists in that 14 minutes that he got in Orlando. Like I said, those numbers don't scream amazing. Those numbers don't really blow your mind, especially because you'll think that he'll play a lot better knowing that he was undrafted and he might not even make the roster um, years from now. And what I mean by that is he was on a cheap two-way contract that gives them flexibility that they can waive him whenever they want to find, to find if they find somebody else that they want, they can waive him and pick them up. But 
I think it just hurts you when you know you work so hard and now you got to start all over. You got to start all over by continuing to put in the work, but you have to find another team that wants to pick you up and then you have to fight to keep that roster spot because he isn't really showing that he deserves to be in the NBA because he just hasn't been able to transition. And a lot of it is his ability to create his own shot. I think in high school, he was so big and so strong that he was able to stand out and dominate the competition. But as um, he went up in the rankings of basketball, uh, especially the levels of basketball, I should say, it got harder. You have guys that are more fast or more athletic um, that can keep up with you that you're not stronger than because you're going against more men in college and in the NBA because he didn't really play that well in summer league. Um, he struggled there too. So it just shows you that if you're not really on top of your game, you're not really making the effort to improve on your weaknesses and you have to do these things quick because you're fighting to stay on the roster spot because it's not the high school team. It's the NBA. You're, this is a job. This is what you get paid to do. This is what you have to do every single game, every single night, every single day you're in the NBA because you can't take it for granted, especially when you're on a two-way contract when it's so easy to get rid of you and replace you with somebody that might play better, might fit better, can be better, especially when you, you are as a Briscoe and you're in the situation that you're in. And I think he understands that. And this is going to be a humbling experience for him to make a roster to be there damn near the whole season. And at the end of the year, you, you, you know, fall out of the rotation a little bit. And then you get ultimately replaced by a guy like Michael Carter Williams. But like I told, told you guys, Michael Carter Williams, I personally feel like I don't really know. If, <laughs> I don't really know if three years from now will he be in the NBA. Um, I really don't because he has really struck me as a surprise. I did not see him making this Orlando roster um, two months ago. I, I really thought he would be playing overseas um, for the rest of his career because of the way he ended in Houston. They picked him up and he only really played won 16 games and he didn't really play terrible but he didn't really play that much to really gauge uh, his development he didn't really play that much to gauge how good he has become now he has played in Orlando nine games he hasn't shot the ball well he shot 34 percent from the field and 18 percent from three but he still showed that he can get a lot of blocks and a lot of steals a lot of rebounds a lot of assists while still scoring the ball every now and then but the thing that's bad about Michael Carter Williams he's 6'6 190 but he's 27 years old and for him to be fighting to make a roster spot at that age and he still lacks the ability to shoot and create his own shot on a consistent basis I think that eventually he, he's going to have to adapt and evolve I've been saying that for years but it showed more this year that he, he's running out of opportunities um, to really make a roster if he really is not going to um, learn how to shoot and play defense consistently. But not only that, at least become a better free throw shooter. But it's easier said than done. Some players can learn how to shoot. Some players just never can get it to go um, and develop that. But the best part about Michael Carter-Williams is that he can do so much, so many other things well that he's going to always have a skill set knowing um, when somebody picks him up or knowing that they have an injury, they know what he brings to the table. They know his game, and they know that he has competed on this level. Um, even though he has never been a great scorer or a great finisher or, or just putting points on the board, um, he does do a lot of other things very well. Um, and he's a, a guy that can play the one, the two, and the three and guard multiple positions and some fours when it comes to height, length, and athleticism. Is he a great defender? Of course not, but he still has the ability to be a switchable player, and that's what the modern NBA wants you to be, a guy that can switch and play multiple positions. But at the end of the day, I, I feel a little sorry for Isaiah Briscoe, but um, it's a business. It's nothing personal. He might be a good guy. He might be a guy that has improved a lot since college and high school, but he still has ways to go to get to where he wants to be and as a starter in the NBA. But it's harder than you think. This is a guy that a lot of people felt was a top 10 pick lock coming into college and obviously to be undrafted is heartbreaking. 
it, it's nothing like that. You put in all this work, and then you have to go to college another year. Then you go to college another year, have a better season, and you still don't even get drafted. And then you make a roster, get some playing time, and then you have to start all the way over because now you're waived, and now you got to find a team, and then you got to work your way back up on that team. It just shows you how hard it is to be in the NBA, how much of a professional you have to be, and how much work you have to consistently put in to warrant one of these spots in the NBA. People think it's easy. People think that they can play. It's so easy to get to the NBA. You have to have the work ethic. You have to have the drive. And you have to continue to improve unless they're going to find somebody that can take your spot, especially with this new G League and Summer League where they can try out talent and, and see it and evaluate them before they even make an NBA roster. And now they have a bigger pool of players that they can pull from and pick that can always take your spot. Because remember, the players come from overseas. Once their season is over, they become free agents and they can sign with the NBA team. You can play in the G League down there the whole season and you can get picked up. So it just gives you the incentive that you have to work harder. You have to do better because there's so much player, so much pool of players that can really take your spot. So if you're not really on your game or you're taking it for granted, it's so easy to get released because of two-way contracts and the fact that it's a lot of players that's available around this time. And that means you have a chance to get waived. So it's a business. It's ugly sometimes. It hurts you sometimes. But you have to continue to work on your game, and that's just part of being a professional. So you got to look at it from that perspective, and it is a business, and you have to be a professional when it comes to that too. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think it was the right thing to replace Isaiah Briscoe and Michael Carter-Williams? Do you think it matter? Do you think it don't matter? Do you think they both will be in the NBA two to three years from now, or do you think they both will be gone? Um, they both not great shooters, and they both not the greatest um, – players but they are NBA players to me and I feel like both of these players deserve a roster spot but you know years from now if they don't learn how to shoot or find other ways defensively or other things that they can really add to a team they're going to struggle making a roster in the future but Check out my older videos um, on my channel. I have playlists on my channel that allow you to see. I do breakdowns, tributes to the legend breakdowns, uh, rookie breakdowns. I cover summer league. I cover the NBA draft. I cover all things NBA, even trade deadline, even free agency. Um, check out my videos and my older playlists. Um, if you're a fan of this video, check out those. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Also, I check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Like on Facebook to show support. Thanks for everybody that's been buying merchandise. Thanks for everybody that's been liking the videos. Thanks for everybody that's been commenting. I appreciate it, and I appreciate the activity. I appreciate the support. Also, I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. That's why I continue to go. I love doing this. I love the support. I love the guys and people that help me out every day and continue to watch. Check out the playlist. Check out my website. Check out my Facebook page. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. I'm gone.